Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here again with the Microsoft Surface Duo 2 and we're gonna talk about the camera setup. We're doing a review. I went out and I took pictures during the daytime, during the nighttime, during the bright time. I took video samples, selfie camera, also the primary low light, dark time. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna take a look at it, talk about it, is it any good? I've been seeing a lot of stuff out there. Pretty much most things I've seen say that it's trash. And it's totally not trash. If you want to compare it to an iPhone 13 Pro in certain situations, if you want to compare it to the Microsoft Surface Duo previously, it's amazing. And if you want to compare it to some other flagship phones that are out there, yeah, it may not be on the same level. But does it take bad pictures? Absolutely no, it does not. Does it take bad video? No, eh, not really that either. So we're going to go in and we're going to take a look at it so you can see it with your own eyes, make your own determination on whether it's any good and what kind of criticism it deserves. So let's go ahead and dive in, take a look at the camera setup. Before we do that, I do wanna say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, where have you been? We've been here, you haven't, glad you showed up. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's take a look and see how good this camera setup actually is. So here we have the front-facing selfie camera when it comes to video. You can see here that it has pretty decent quality. The only thing that's a drawback here, 1080p at 30 frames per second. I would have liked to have seen at least 4K at 30. On the back at least you get the 4K at 60 frames per second, so it's pretty versatile in that regard. But I wanted to take a second to show this off so you can get a good feel for the camera quality, the microphone quality. There's a nice breeze. I'm kind of standing here in like the front area of my house so it's blocking some of it but yeah there's a little bit of wind here but otherwise I think that the microphone sounds pretty good and I think that translates well to the overall viewing experience here but it still looks good even at 1080p and not having 4k but that's one thing I would I would like to see especially at the price point and the Snapdragon 888 is more than capable of supporting it. So what we have here is 4k at 60 frames per second with the Microsoft Surface Duo 2 it does shoot as low as 1080p at 30, it does 1080p at 60, and also 4K at 30. There's no 8K viewing here, none of that crazy stuff. It does have gyroscopic electronic image stabilization, no optical image stabilization, so it'll help out a little bit with some of the jitter whenever you're walking around and doing things. Gives you a little bit more of a smooth effect there. Uh, one thing that you can see here is if you're paying attention to the video in the lower middle portion, it does have a little bit of a lens flare from the sun up there, but otherwise it's not bad. Definitely not anywhere near as bad as the iPhone 13 cameras, which completely irk me. And then also, I wanted to show off the audio so you can get a good feel for what it sounds like. It does have pretty decent microphone quality in here. There is a light breeze that's outside right now. And overall, I think it's pretty complimentary. The colors and the saturation are really nice, very sharp. It's got a nice natural kind of color profile to it. And you can see there, even with the sun up there, that the sky is not too uh, not too blown out when looking up there. I mean, this is the autofocus and all that jazz, but I want to go ahead and show this off so you can get a good feel for how good the quality is and what to expect with the Surface Duo 2. So here we are with the cameras on the Surface Duo 2, but out right here on the back. That is one heck of a camera module. That's a big camera bump for sure, and it occupies a lot of space up here. And you can see also it kind of interrupts the flow of things when you want to flip your phone all the way around so you can just use one screen yeah it creates like this little wedge thing so it's not flat anymore a lot of people aren't too crazy about that i'm not overly crazy about it it doesn't irk me as much as i thought it would because a lot of the time i use mine in book mode i don't usually flip it around like that if you do yeah that's something you're gonna to have to live with i think they probably could have done a little bit better but anyway so the functionality of the camera is what i want to talk about today three cameras back there a 12 megapixel primary, a 12 megapixel telephoto, up to two times optical zoom, and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel front facing selfie camera. I can say unequivocally, all these cameras are light years ahead of last year's Surface Duo. So you're gonna get a lot more capabilities, you're gonna get a lot higher quality shots, you're gonna get a lot faster shutter speed. Really, it's just a brilliant difference, and I've been very, very happy with the change. So when you talk about the primary one on the back, 
It's got phase detection autofocus. It's also got optical image stabilization for the photography and it's got EIS for the video. So you can get some nice shots with this, especially when you've got decent lighting. Now, is it as amazing as the iPhone 13 Pro? No. Is it as amazing as the S21 Ultra? No. Is it like 85% there? Yeah, it takes some pretty decent photos. Let's go ahead and take a look at these samples while I talk. I took a lot of pictures. I took pictures of me. I took pictures of the outside world. I took some pictures in the golden hour as the sun's going down, finding some flowers, finding some you know, like local stuff outside, some plants and things like that, things that you typically just see around and take photos of. And this is what I typically do when I do my camera tests. I like to go out and have a look at things that are out around me, not like go look at skyscrapers. Who's going to take pictures of skyscrapers all the time? I mean, sure you can, I guess, if you live in a big city, but I've been very pleased with it. The Surface Duo original camera was a complete dumpster fire. Everything about it, from the implementation to the having to fold the phone all the way around, to it, it was not good. It was slow. It was janky. It did not take good pictures. This is a whole different story. And I've seen some videos out there. I've seen some stuff people have been talking about where they're like, it's not good. It's not good. Here's the thing. As much as the Surface Duo does have these capabilities, it is still a secondary consideration on the phone. Not a lot of people are going and spending $1,500 plus to take photos with the Surface Duo. And the complaint last year wasn't that it needed to have an amazing camera. It just needed to have functional cameras and not just the selfie camera on the inside that it just flipped around and used for different purposes. So they fixed it in the regard that they added extra cameras and they gave it much, much, much better cameras. And honestly, I'm going to try and put Gcam on here. And this is going to be the first time I've ever put Gcam on a device. I have a feeling if I use Gcam, it may make the camera experience even better. And I didn't see anyone talking about that. I'm pretty sure it's compatible. So stay tuned for that video. So the colors are good. The, it's got HDR. It's got a lot of different good things going for it. You've got the built out camera stuff. You can take the wide angle photos if you want. You can take the telephoto, two time telephoto, and then it does up to a 10 times zoom. And there's an illustration here with that. I took a picture of the skeleton across the street. Yeah, I compared it directly with like the iPhone 13. It, it's not as good. But again, how many people are buying a Surface Duo 2 to go take 10 times magnification zoom in photos of stuff? Is it nice to have? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Is it capable? Yes. Is it good? Yeah. Is it amazing? No, it's not the most amazing. The regular camera I've been very, very impressed with, especially the selfie camera. I took these selfies, went outside, and it works well. Even in low light, it's not the worst. Now, in super low light, this thing falls apart. And that's kind of what I experienced. Unfortunately, you can see this video clip here. It is so choppy. I, I did not expect that at all. I had been taking pictures during the day. I went to Olive Garden for dinner. I took some pictures outside. It was fine. There was okay lighting there, even though it was dark outside. And then I got home and I wanted to take some pictures outside, outside when it was like dark. And oh boy, I had to go back inside to get my iPhone to come out so I could shoot it and show you how choppy it is. So that's kind of a disappointment. I'm hoping they can fix that with like a software update. Surprisingly enough, the pictures turned out okay. And I'm not going to say that they're overly laggy in the shutter speed because it's night mode. It's one of those things where it says hold still and you got to take the photo. Yet the photo came out much, much better than I thought it was going to. But the interface is kind of embarrassingly bad. Like, I don't know if these guys went out and checked it outside. But again, when you look at the Surface Duo 2, and this is not making an excuse for it whatsoever. I'm just calling it what it is. I'm trying to be realistic with this. I don't take those photos with my iPhone or my Pixel or my Samsung, I'm not taking those pictures with the Duo 2. That's not why I have this phone. But you can take them. They're okay. Don't expect greatness. And I really, really hope that they can get some software updates to make that process better. If you've got good lighting or decent lighting, you can take some really, really good photos with this. I have shared some examples here. You can see some more again. The primary camera, I think, is good. The wide angle is good. And the selfie camera, I think, is good. The telephoto is fine. I mean, I think that it's significantly improved. I think it gives you the capabilities. Is it worth having this kind of wedge appearance where it doesn't close all the way? I think so, because I care enough about the cameras that it's more important for them to be there for me than dealing with this. I would not leave your phone in this configuration though, because you've got support from the camera module here, but on this side, like I would hesitate putting it in my pocket like this 
or setting it down somewhere and like accidentally like setting something on it. I would be so worried I would mess it up uh, because that's a lot of uh, problems just waiting to happen there. But the camera module itself, I'm perfectly happy with it. I think it takes very good photos. It's not even overly awkward. Like when you take pictures, I just hold it like this. I mean, it's, or you can hold it like this. And e either way it works fine. Or you can do it like this for the selfie camera. Whenever you hold it closed though, you can't use the primary camera. So that's also something that you need to be aware of. So it's kind of janky whenever you take pictures with it in this one regard. Whenever you take pictures, it's nice. It shows the image over here. So let's, let's hit the shutter. We'll take a picture. It's going to pop up over here. That's fine. When you want to do video, so let's go to video. Let's record a video. Da, 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 da. All right, we've recorded a video. I'm just going to send it over here. Let's hit play. Da, 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 da. All right, we've... Here's what happens if you try to turn the volume up. It starts recording again. So you have to exit the camera, go to the video, to go to the video player or the camera app so you can look at it there and then, and then try that. If you try to use the volume rocker while you're using the camera app, even whenever it shoots the video to the other side, yeah, it's going to keep using the shutter and not, and not adjust the volume. So I think there's some implementation things they can do here. I think there's some refinements, some software updates. I think we can make this better. Now, is it good as it is? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think anyone that's had the Duo or was worried about how the camera setup would work with this is going to be happy. If you are looking to get Pixel or iPhone or Samsung quality and sophistication out of this, no, this is only their second time making one of these phones. The first time with this camera module, there are some kinks that need to be worked out. We've seen in the past other phones that have had terrible cameras that have been made much, much better through software updates. Again, not saying this one is bad. I enjoy it. I think it's perfectly fine. I think if you're a Surface enthusiast and you like the Surface Duo phones, you're going to be happy with it. If you want a reason to complain, you can find one. And if you expect this to compete with an iPhone, you're delusional because those are two completely different beasts and that's not what this phone is for. So that's all I've got in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it's given you some insight on the practicality of the camera, on how well it works, on the specs and the capabilities and also the photo samples. So if you enjoyed the video, like I always say, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want to get updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.